Hey everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. Today I want to talk a little bit about long-term Bitcoin holders and whether or not their spending behavior might give us an idea about where we are in this bear market. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter. With a lot of updates, better indicators, and more over there. So one of the lovely things about Bitcoin is that because it's an open ledger, it's a public ledger, we can all go in and look at behavior of different types of market participants. And of course, one of the key differentiators that people have come up with to distinguish different types of Bitcoin holders is the idea of long-term holders, which is oftentimes defined as being 155 days and older, and short-term holders. And the idea is that long-term holders often are a lot less likely to spend their coins, to you know distribute their coins, whereas short-term holders are much more likely to be actively trading. And so a lot of people look at long-term holders as kind of being the, you know, the hodlers to some degree, or oftentimes they fall in more into that cohort. And so um, they also tend to be more savvy. At least we can see that in the data that they tend to be better at selling the top and potentially buying the bottom than um, the shorter term holders or kind of the people who are um, Johnny come lately, you know, who come in during the hype cycle and aren't really um, attuned to the asset and the cycles it tends to go to, to go through. So when we're talking about the bear market then, one of the things we can look at is what are long-term holders doing that can give us a sense of are we you know, maybe entering the later stages or are we at the early stages? So the first chart I'm showing you here is just the long-term holder realized price. So this is, you can think of this as the average cost basis for long-term holders as an entire cohort, as a group. And you know we've talked about this before. One of the things that you'll notice is that bear market bottoms historically for Bitcoin have occurred below the long-term holder cost basis, the average cost basis for long-term holders. Usually it's gone a bit underwater before we found a bottom. And we've technically done that, but only just barely really, right? You know, the long-term holder cost basis right now is at 19.7K, uh, around that, or 19.88K here. And, you know, we did have that wick down to 17.6K, although our closes have tended to be a little bit closer to the long-term holder realized price. But what are long-term holders doing as we've gotten near their cost basis? You know, one of the things that we've talked about before is that cost bases matter a lot psychologically, and they matter a lot more the closer you are to them, right? This is prospect theory. It's this idea that when you're really close to that even ground, that middle ground, you know, in this case, zero between profit and loss, then movements around your cost basis psychologically feel more impactful than if you're, you know, uh, let's say 10x in profit, or if you're down, you know, 90% on your investment. Variations when you're up that far or down that far don't really feel that different, that don't really make much of a difference psychologically, whereas when they're right around your cost basis, minor fluctuations in the price can matter a lot because it can be the difference between being in profit and being in loss. And so the idea is that there might be some reactions at cost basis, either people coming in to defend it or actually capitulating out, spending their coins so that they don't fall out of profit or fall further out of profit if they've if price has crashed below the cost basis. What I want to talk about is our long-term holders selling, right? So we know that they're they're near their cost basis right now. We've seen it dip below before. And the idea would be that, you know, if long-term holders start selling out at a large volume, that could mean that we have further downside to come, right? Because that could be one of the things that's happened in the past when we get to these big capitulations that if long-term holders join the selling frenzy, then that can drive the price down. These are people who are very unlikely to spend their coins. They suddenly join in on the selling, then that can be a thing that can really push price down into this potential last leg. And the question is, have we seen that yet from long-term holders? Well, very simply, we can go and just look at the long-term holder spending. So this is a chart that Chain Exposed has that just shows long-term holder spending as a percentage of their supply. So of the, of the percentage of supply that at the time is being held by long-term holders, what percent of that supply has been spent at a given point in time? And so this is the 30-day moving average that we're looking at over here. And so, you know, going back to what I said before, long-term holders tend to be savvy, right? You can see them spending their coins at these topping points. They actually spent a little bit early in 2017 and in 2021, but generally pretty good. But what you'll also notice is that you'll get these spikes right around these ultimate capitulation points for the asset. You know, we saw this back in the 2015 bear market where they actually capitulated out a little bit early and then that led into that final crash. 
And then this being a 30 day moving average is a bit lagged. They were probably joining into this big capitulation in 2018 going into the bottom. And so really uh, a spike in long term holder spending marked the bottoms of both the 2015 bear market and the 2018 bear market. And so if we take that into what we're looking at right now, have we seen that? Well, not especially, right? You know, we've seen some uptick in spending, you know, something somewhat similar to actually what we saw back in the summer of 21. You see this uptick in long-term holder spending that happened right around when we hit the bottom of that kind of mini bear market before moving back to the US side. You know, we saw that again back over into this move down into January, you know, uptick in long-term holder spending, then down and then into this capitulation more recently, we've again seen long-term holders start to capitulate. But it's not a super extreme movement, right? And so that could be interpreted as a reason for concern, right? If we think that a capitulation by long-term holders is necessary or we can find a bottom, you know, it's arguable whether or not we've really seen any kind of serious long-term holder spending that might be diagnostic of that. That being said, though, one of the other things we can look at on this chart is that kind of the amount of spending by long-term holders in general as a percentage of the supply that they control has been going down over time, right? You can see that generally speaking, the peaks, you know, 2017 being an exception here, the peaks have generally been lower and lower every single market cycle, you know, with the um, big peak here in January 21 being considerably lower than we saw um, for any of these kind of big bull runs in the past. And then, you know, especially at the all time high here being way lower, you know, being back down at about 2019 levels. So you might just argue that the amount of long-term holders who are willing to capitulate, you know, the people who are still willing to spend their coins in fear is getting lower and lower and lower. There are fewer and fewer long-term holders who are susceptible to, to panicking and selling, you know, in, in drawdowns in Bitcoin. So maybe this is as much of a spike as we need to see, to see some of a bottoming here. You know, that's one ambiguity. We don't really know, but it is the case that, you know, what they call illiquid supply. So the people who buy Bitcoin and just have very little history or no history at all of spending it. So kind of a one way um, uh, sponge of Bitcoin supply has been growing with time. There might be some and, you know, those people will overlap with long term holders. So there's a possibility that there are just fewer and fewer people who are likely to be capitulating out in a bear market. And so perhaps you don't actually need to see as much of a spike to find a bottom. And, you know, obviously, this is assuming you need to see a spike at all to reach a bottom with this. But if that has marked bear markets in the past, one thing to keep an eye on. And, you know, I think you could read this in two ways. The one way is to say, nope, I don't believe that um, long term holders now are any different than they were in 2018. Therefore, we still need to see a spike to see the bottom, in which case you'd, inter you'd interpret this as a bearish sign that we need to see more capitulation. But if instead you say, well, maybe long term holders now are different from 2018, then maybe this is as much of a spike in the spending as we need to see in this bear market. And again, you know, it meets, matches the summer drawdown, although again, this bear market has been a lot more severe than that summer drop down. Now, we can also just visualize this a little bit differently to see where has the spending been happening most recently. And this just confirms what we we're looking at with the previous chart, right? The vast majority of spending that's been contributing into this drawdown, so this is over the last 30 days, has really been from you know, the, the all time high back in November, you know, October, and then more recently with some people capitulating out who had been in in 2021 and, um, you know, uh, late 2020, early 2021. These people would count as long term holders. You know, they've been holding for longer than 155 days. So they'd be contributing to that spike that we saw on the previous chart here. But then we'd also see people who um, over here who actually also would have aged in the long term holder um bands from here selling out and only a few people from back in these really early days of bitcoin selling out right you know we see a bubble here in uh the bottom of 2018 so people who decided to sell make sure they stayed heavily in profit you know over the last 30 days and a few people who actually before the 2017 peak also sold out but that pales in comparison to what's been happening more recently so really when we're looking at who's driving the selling recently it's been more the short-term holders who have been doing so and people who bought the top both in 2021 and or, or at both the spring of 21 and the fall of 21. Not really so much your kind of OG um, holders, your long, long-term holders. For the most part, they seem to be content to hold their assets. And we see this a lot more clearly. We look at this indicator here, the reserve risk indicator. And this basically is looking at sentiment of long-term holders. Basically, are they opting to spend their coins now thinking that lower prices are likely to come 
Or are they saying, no, I'm just going to hold on to my coins because I expect higher prices in the future where I can get a better um, better profit. You know, e either profit, you know, either actual profit because they've been holding for a long time or at least break even if they've been holding more from the tops like we are seeing back here in 2021. And what we can see from this metric, so basically high scores on this metric suggest low, uh, poor long-term holder sentiment. This is when they're really distributing their coins. They think that lower prices are around the corner or coming up soon. So therefore, they want to spend now so they can rebuy in later. And then lower levels mean that they're willing to give up the, the opportunity cost. Basically, they say, these prices aren't good enough for me. I'm going to continue holding because I think price is going to go higher and can sell at a better level later. So that's what lower values mean. And we're actually about as low as we've we've ever been on this indicator. So I'm just going to zoom in on it specifically here. We can see we're basically at the same levels now that we were back in kind of the deep bear market in 2015. In fact, actually, this level was recorded kind of in that second drop that we had in um, 2015, not the actual bottom, which happened a little bit earlier in January of 2015. That's the level that we're at right now. We're at we're basically playing with those same levels now. So from this indicator's perspective, at least the way that long-term holders are treating this bear market, they're treating this basically the same way they've treated previous bear markets, right? They've treated this very much the same way they've treated bear market low points, you know, in the depths of 2015, um, and then here in 2018, and then the March 2020 crash actually being lower, we're even below that level now. And so you know, one of the ways that we can look at this and say, okay, that means that long-term holders are just content to hold their assets, right? They're content to hold their coins. And this might be consistent with that idea that I was talking about before with our long-term holders different now, you know, are they maybe more of them willing to just kind of hold on for longer, expecting ultimate appreciation of the Bitcoin price, or maybe taking a longer view. That could be what's going on here to explain why this metric is so incredibly low right now, that long-term holders just really don't think it's worth spending right now. They'd rather just hold and think that price will appreciate soon enough that they can then spend at a higher level. Now, obviously, you know, one of the things that we had to keep in mind is that in the past, they were making these decisions in very much bullish macro contexts, whereas right now, well, not necessarily bullish macro contexts, but not high inflation, not as uh, bearish as they are right now. So, you know, I wouldn't call the, these points in the market, in the general macro markets necessarily bullish in 2018 in the you know late 2018 and in 2015 but they weren't nearly as bearish i think a lot of people would argue as macro conditions are right now so that's one thing is that you know maybe long-term holders if some other shoe drops in the more macro context reevaluate whether or not they'd like to just you know lock up any profits that they have or just get out while they can and that could then affect this metric right you might expect this to move back to the upside even maybe as price would fall if long-term holders start really capitulating out of the market but we haven't really seen that right now. We haven't seen that yet. And so this suggests that, or at least right now, long-term holders are saying, you know, I think that the lows are pretty close, or at least that any further that we're going to go to the downside, excuse me, further to the downside, it's not worth risking selling now and potentially have price move up away from me for the possibility of lower prices. So they're just going to hold on to the prices they have right, uh, the, the assets they have right now, try to ride it and see what happens. So when we take these pieces of data together, you know, one of the things that we see is just a lot of strength from long-term holders. That's the way that I kind of interpret this, right? We're near their cost basis. This is where we'd expect them to start getting skittish, right, as a group. And certainly we have seen some spending by long-term holders, right? We've seen some uptick here, but not to the degree that we've seen before. So that could mean that maybe long-term holders like reverse this reserve risk um, metric is saying, they're just not content to sell here. They think, you know, they kind of missed their opportunity to sell at higher levels. So at this point, you know, there's too much risk of price moving away from them to sell right now. They're content to just hold on to their assets where they are. So this doesn't mean the bottom's in, right? Because a lot of factors can contribute to a bottom beyond, beyond just long-term holders. But what it does mean is that it seems that at least for now, long-term holders are not just as a group going in and dumping a bunch of supply into the market, which could be a thing that would really drive a next leg of a capitulation. And so if we do get a further leg down, I personally don't think it's going to be driven by long-term holders just suddenly deciding to sell their coins and driving price down. I think if we do see a long-term holder capitulation that could see a, a spike in their spending, you know, back up to, to higher levels, it would be that there'd be some other thing that happened that drew prices down that would then really scare long-term holders and get them to exit the market. 
haven't really seen that right now. So I think, you know, my kind of base case is that long-term holders are treating this as close to a bottom. And if we do see further downside, it won't be because of long-term holders. It'll be because of something else, like potentially further contagion from things like the 3AC um, and Celsius debacles, et cetera. So that's just some things I, I was thinking about recently I wanted to share is that long-term holders so far seem strong. We haven't seen a large capitulation from them. And, you know, some might argue we have to see that before we can hit the bottom. I'm not so sure that's necessary. Really, what I think this is, is though, is that that's some realm of security that they're not adding to the sell pressure. So any further downside will have to come from somewhere else. All right, if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter. Put a lot of updates, better indicators, and more over there.